A blessed day to each and every one. For today, we're going to talk about statistics and we will discuss about variables and measurement, statistical notation. We're going to describe what is discrete and continuous variables and we're going to identify examples, differentiate the nominal ordinal interval and ratio scales of measurements, and we're going to identify what is represented by each of the following symbols, x, y, uppercase n, and lower case n, and the summation. And we're going to perform calculations using summation, notation, and other mathematical operations to follow the correct order of operations. We have variables like intelligence, hunger, anxiety. So these variables, we call this as constructs. It is constructs because it is an internal attribute or characteristics that cannot be directly observed or we call this as intangible and oftentimes they are called hypothetical constructs. Operational definition is a set of operations for measuring an external behavior and uses the resulting measurement as a definition and a measurement of a hypothetical construct. It has two components which is number one describing a set of operations for measuring contracts and number two it defines the construct in terms of the resulting measurements let's take a look on how does continuous and discrete data differ from each other so what are their differences how are they different? When we talk about discrete data, they are counted. And continuous data is measured. Discrete data cannot be divided. It is extinct and it can be occurred in a certain value. While a continuous data can be divided infinitely. Let's have an example. We have the number of dogs we can also have the number of students for discrete data and the amount of money we can also have the number of children a couple decide to have for continuous we have the weight of the dog height of the student and time it takes to run for a mile continuous data can be measured by histogram or line graph and discrete data can be measured or can be represented by a bar graph so that's why when it comes to real limits, this is the boundaries of intervals for scores that are represented by continuous number line. And it has parts. The first one is the upper limit. For the upper limit, it is the top of the interval. So here we are seeing 67.75, 68.0, and 68.25. The upper limit is 67.75. And when we talk about the lower limit, it's the bottom portion, which is 68.25. Let's take a look on the construction of the frequency of distribution. So the lower limit is 12.0. Okay, sorry, this will 67.75 is the lower limit and the upper limit is 12.4. So this is the upper limit, 68.25. How about the real limit? The real limit here is 68.0 because the real limit separate two adjacent score and it is located exactly halfway between the scores so if we're going to to subtract 68.0 to 67.75 the answer will be 0 0.25 68.0 subtracted by 68.25 it's negative um, 0 0.25 when it comes to the levels of measurement, we have the nominal, this is the name variables. For example, if you are watching different TV shows, it can be channel 7, channel 2, those are nominal. 
when we talk about ordinal, you have the name plus the ordered variables. It is a rank of order which can be showed as the first, second, or third. For the interval, you have the name and then the ordered and then the proportionate interval between variables. It is being ordered categories that are all the intervals of exactly the same size so we can have for example from rating rating from 0 to 8 we have 8.2 9.1 and 9.6 and in the ratio it's an interval scale that has an additional feature of an absolute zero we can have 15.20 14.10 and 13.40 Statistical notation. So for statistical notation, these are being done when we have observations that has been made for two variables. There will be a scores for each individual. And the data can be represented by an X and Y for the two variables. So for example, observation for people's height in inches available in variable X. And the weight in pounds, it will be in variable Y. This can be presented as shown in the double column on each margin. Each pair of X and Y represent the observation made from the single participant. So if we're going to have the uppercase N, this is the number of scores in the population. And the lowercase N is the number of scores in sample the order of mathematical operations that we have to use first is we have to calculate the one that contain parentheses second is the squaring or we call this as the rising to other exponents and then third is multiplying and dividing in the multiplication and division operation this shall be done in order from left to right we also have the summation using the summation notation. Summation is the sum sets of sum of the sets of scores. And then we're going to do the addition and subtraction. So for instance, we have the summation of x square root. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to add all the scores in here. So let's have an example. Here we have a set of four scores that consists of values of 3, 1, 7, and 4. And we will compute for the summation of x, summation of x squared, and summation of square root of x. So how are we going to do this? So in doing this, let's take an example and compute. So in computation, I'm going to show you the computation. So let's have a document that will going to be displayed in here so that we can access the computation. And how are we going to do that? So in doing that, we're going to take a look on the following computation so give me one second as i project the computation so let's have variables and measurement okay let's take a look on this one on this computation so for example there are set of four scores okay so on the set of four scores um, it consists of a values of one seven and we also have let me just uh, minimize my screen so that we can see the entire set okay there so a set of four score consists of values three one seven and four we're going to compute for the summation of x and x um, summation of x squared and the uh, ex uh, summation of x squared so let's 
put the values on the x-axis so this will be 3 this will be 1 this will be 7 and this will be 4 now for the x squared we'll just have to multiply the x variables by 2 so 3 times multiplied by itself is 9 so 3 times 3 is 3 6 9 9 1 is 1 7 is 49 and then 4 is 16 so after which we're going to get the sum of x in getting the sum of x we're just going to use the summation so we are going to highlight the variables here the scores and that will be 15 so this will be our answer for the summation of x and for the ex a summation of x squared we're going to uh, add x squared here so it will be 70, 75 and for the summation of x um, square root so we're just going to multiply the summation of x so that will be 15 multiply by 2 so that will be uh, 15 multiply by 15 we're going to multiply it by itself so that will be 225 so this will be our answer Another set of activities. So what is the value of the summation of x minus 2 for the following scores? So we have the scores of 6, 2, 4, and 2. So here, we're going to take a look. It has an operation of x minus 2. So we're going to minus, subtract our x with 2. So 6 minus 2 is 4. 2 minus 2 is 0. 4 minus 2 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. So, we're just getting the summation of x minus 2. So, we're going to get the sum of the variables of x minus 2. So, it is 6. So, the answer here on the summation of x minus 2 is 6. Next one. A set of scores consists of values. So, we already have the values 3, 1, 7, and 4. Now, we're going to compute for x minus 1. So, 3x is our x is 3, so 3 minus 1 is 2, 1 minus 1 is 0, 7 minus 1 is 6, and 4 minus 1 is 5. Now, x minus 1, we have x minus 1 squared. So we're going to, we already have the x minus 1 here, so we're just going to multiply it by itself because it's square root. So 2 times 2 is 4, 0 times 0 is 0, 6 times 6 is 36, 5 times 5 is 25. So we'll just getting uh, the summation of x minus 1. So we're going to sum up all these variables. And then we're just going to copy on the x minus 2. For our x minus 1, our answer is 13. And summation of x minus 1 square root, our answer is 65. So that's it for our statistical notation.